in secret places, so I shall not see him, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord. So am I a God that is near and not afar off? Okay. Can man hide himself in secret places in the deep, dark caves so I can't see him? You, you can't run slash hide. First off, God sees everything, like the first scripture says in Proverbs 15, 3. I want you to get this point. In Proverbs 15, 3, it says God sees everything. In Jeremiah 23, 23, you can't run or hide from God. It says, can man hide in secret places so I can't see him. You can't hi run slash hide from God. Like the last scripture says, God sees all, including where you're hiding, what you're hiding, and where you're at, and what you're doing. God sees it. God sees it. So not only can what? Not only does God see everything, but you can't hide from God. No, you can't hide nowhere from that guy. You start trying to hide from God, you're in big trouble. Because God still sees you. God sees you even in the darkest caves. Even in the deepest depths of the earth. You can go to the center of the earth if you wouldn't get burned up. Go to the center of the earth, the hottest part of the earth, and be right there in the center of the earth and stay there for the rest of your life. Guess what? God still sees you. God sees you no matter where you're at. God even sees you in heaven. If, this, if, if I'm quoting the scripture right, what did the rich man say? He looked up, he says, God. He says, for I thirst. He says, dip your finger in some cool water that I, might, that I might have a drink so I don't thirst no more. And tell my family to not come here. And the hell is real, basically. What did God say? He saw him, yeah. But what did God say? He says, for there is a great gulf between me and you. I cannot do so. Because he was a sinful, wicked man. He was a rich man. But in the context of where I'm going, it's not about what he did. It's what God saw. God saw him in hell. God saw him in hell, but God couldn't do nothing. Why? Yes, God's a merciful God. He loved the rich man. The rich man went to hell. There's no saying I'm sorry after you go to hell. When you finally get to hell, there's no God. Please, I'm sorry. Tell my family this and please forgive me. No, once you're in hell, it's done. God's going to be like, look, there's a great gulf between me and you. I can't do nothing about that. So not only does God see everything and you can't hide from God. Let's go to Isaiah 57.15. Now, these are all uh, Old Testament scriptures today. Isaiah 57, 15. Last scripture of the show. Isaiah 57, 15. By Trusty, Ho Trusty Homecoming Bible. Isaiah 57, 15. I know Brian's having a lot of fun. Going, yeah, he didn't do it. Fifty-seven, chapter fifty-seven of Isaiah, Isaiah first, verse fifteen. Starting at verse fifteen. For thus saith the high and whole, the high and lofty one, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and receive the heart of of the contrite ones. So, for thus saith the high and the lofty one who inherits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him, who has a contrite and humble spirit, 
to receive the spirit of the humble and to receive the heart of the the contrite ones. I don't know if I'm reading that word right. It's a little bit of a different translation than what I got from the internet, but same idea. Hence the title, In a Butterfly on the Throne and in Our Hearts. So, and as that scripture said, he not only, let me go back, I should have marked it. Here we go, 57 verse 15. So, like it says, Isaiah 57, yes, verse 15. Like it says, For thus says the high and the lofty one who inherits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to receive the spirit of the humble and to receive the heart of the contrite ones. And I'll keep reading. For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. For the spirit, spirit will fall before me, and the souls which I have made. So, what this word is saying is not only is he on a butterfly, or in a butterfly, on the throne, and in our hearts all at the exact same time, not only is he in a butterfly, on the throne, and in our hearts, he's there at the same time. Because it says, not only is he in the high places, he's in us. It says right here, for I, for thus saith the high and lofty one who inherits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. So he's up in the heavens. The next part of scripture says, to receive the spirit of the humble, to receive the spirit of God, the humble. And to receive the heart of the contrite ones, which means us. So he receives God's spirit. See, he always got God's spirit. He is the carnate of God in the flesh when he was alive. And so he not only is on in a butterfly on the throne, but in our hearts all at the same time. He's up there and in here at the same time. He's both places. He's omnipresent. No matter what you do, God is always around, seeing everything, hearing everything, and knowing everything. So why do you think you can hide from God when you can't? And don't give me one of those things where people say, well, you know, I don't hide from God. I openly display my sins. I'm talking about just not specific things, but in general, there are people out there who get plastered drunk and go, oh, praise the Lord, glory to God. There are some fruit, I'm not, not going to say it that way, excuse me, but there are some gay people out there who want to give glory to God and, oh, I love God. There's a gentleman, quick story, in uh, the jail that I was in for many years. And uh, long story short, because, you know, it was just all hearsay, basically. Long story short, he was a gay person and, uh, he would flaunt himself around, but he said he loved God and loved him with all his heart. But you can't love God with all your heart and be that way if that's the case. If you are, say say you are a drunk, say you are an adulteress. The Bible says if you're, it says drunkards, idolaters, idolaters, and effeminates will not enter into the kingdom of God. There are more than that in this world, murderers, thieves. If you are doing sin, thinking you can hide from God, you're not going to enter into the gates of heaven. You're not going into heaven whatsoever. You need to stop doing what it is that you are doing because you can't hide from God. God sees it all. But some people, they don't hide from God. They just flaunt it right there. Oh, yeah, I did this, that, and the other thing, but I love God. No, you don't. You can't say you love God if you continue doing this. And don't try to change anything. Don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. There are things that I that I need to correct myself in a general sense. Not just specifics, but there are things I need to correct. I need to do more stuff around the house and things like that. There are things that I need to do that are 
that I can't say that I can love God but openly do things that are wrong. I mean, some people say cleanliness is next to godliness. No, but it's always good to have a, well, a clean house. It's always good to have a clean room. Well, what if you got guests coming over and you're trying to display God's characteristics? You got to have a clean place, you know, because you can't really, you can't really uh, show God off if you're a mess. But there are things in my life, even even more than just that, that I need to correct as a Christian. And I'm not perfect. I need to go through as much deliverance and inner healing as the next person does. There are things in my life that I totally say I love God, but then I harbor unforgiveness with certain things. I harbor other things, too, that are in that area of unforgiveness and un, uh, being ungrateful in a sense. And it's not a wrong thing. I mean, it's wrong to think that way. It's wrong to be that way. But it's not wrong that... How do I say this, Lord? It's wrong that you're doing that stuff, but in a sense, it's okay. Because if you are like me in working on those areas, even my wife says my mouth is one of the problems. I, I haven't cursed. I don't. Usually, I have. I don't curse, but nowadays it's just like life is just so bombarding. I have to fly off at the mouth once in a while. Don't get me wrong; it's not good, but it's okay. Why? Because like me and other Christians out there, we are striving every day to work at what the scripture says, to stop doing what we are doing. We are trying to do what we need to do to stop this. So, in a sense, we are what? In a sense, we are his people, and he not only live, is on, in a butterfly, on the throne, and in our hearts, but he's everywhere. Seeing everything, knowing everything, Excuse me. Hearing everything. And to the point to where we can't hide from him. You ever play hide and seek when you are a child and you had a great hiding spot that no one could find? Mine was like a bush. I was, I was in a bush. I specifically howled out of a bush once when I was a kid just to hide in there. So I was hiding in this bush kind of thing. There's other great places. There was trees where I grew up at, and I used to hide in the trees, and we used to also play flashlight tag, but play hide and seek, I had some really great hiding spots, but here's the thing. They couldn't find me, but God knew where I was at. No matter what, if you're playing hide and seek with your, how do I say this, your sinful action, then God's going to find you. There is no such thing as a good hiding spot with God. Let's pray. Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and to bless us richly, being that we are giving our lives back to you. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name to forgive us, cleanse us, and to be with us throughout this coming week and this coming day, Lord, that when we are tempted, we can look up to you, who is not only in the heavens, but in our hearts at the same time. Like the message is, Lord, in a butterfly, on the throne in our hearts. So we thank you, Lord, that you are doing a mighty work in us and that we can be set free from unforgiveness, from unrighteousness, from being gay, wherever else that it is, Lord, that we as a people can be free from what? Sin. So we ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you come into our heart, back into our hearts, back into our lives. Cleanse us and be with us through this coming week. I ask you, Lord, to bless everyone else that's listening to, Lord, at the sound of my voice. Anything that their hearts desire, Lord, that it not be what? Selfish. Not one of those, I want a 2020 car because I want one. No, rather, I need a car to get to point A to point B to get to church, to get to work, to get to school, to get to wherever it is you need to get to. You need a car, Lord. I need a car to get there. So we thank you, and we praise you for that, Lord. I ask you to heal everyone at the sound of my voice. That not Heal everyone at the sound of my voice. Cancer, diabetes, all that stuff, Lord. Yes, Lord, even like gonorrhea, syphilis, AIDS, and all those uh, diseases, they contracted themselves. Why, Lord? Because when you heal them, it shows your love, your mercy, and your grace. 
I ask you to be with me and my wife through this next coming year that we can celebrate a five-year anniversary next year and that we will be blessed throughout this year, Lord.